tool. I'm Alana King. This has been developed for our project management resource assignment. And what I want to tell you about is Trello, but also why to choose this particular resource. So for our assignment, I found research on Trello using um, this sort of management during library collection migration, for example, or for agile software development. And then a third example that's happening right now, which is as a collaborative project tool for remote secondary school learning. To understand Trello, you might want to understand that it's based on a system called Kanban, and Kanban is Japanese for visual card. It was developed by the company Toyota in the 1940s and has been used in various iterations ever since, and it's become global in its uh, workflow integration um, facilitation. So this might be the earliest example that you've ever seen of a Kanban, something that you know you have already in your workplace done like this on a whiteboard with some sticky notes and and uh, virtual timelines and and maybe even um, project people assigned to each task. So what happens when we involve Trello, the digital version? The question asked of each student doing a resource assignment was, what did you find to be most intriguing or interesting about the resource? And I wanted to tell you that I think the principles of Kanban applied to a digital workflow are what I found the most intriguing and interesting. Trello then can provide solutions for a variety of collaborative issues and project management contexts. And these are the things that that old analog version of the Kanban system can't do. It can't travel with you. It can't hyperlink to research sources. It can't integrate with digital timelines. And the communication of around that Kanban board, that an analog Kanban board, is it actually has to be happening while you're standing in front of that board. Those are huge limitations. So I think Trello's development is a natural step in the progress of Kanban. From my favorite resource about the use of Trello, a lot of this language came from it. Um, and the author asks, what is it about group work that brings out the worst in people? Is it one, the murky nature of accountability? The person evaluating the success of your project never knows who did what. Number two, that there's always one deadweight group member who's going to pass based on your work and your knowledge. Three, the, the idea of building consensus and finding truth are not always the same thing. And those limits can get very murky when you're having friction and you're having conversations around the direction to go. And four, the nature of team development at its core. Why are you put together? Why are you personally there? How does your role or the role that you've normally fulfilled fit into this team within this project? These are the areas where collaboration can become challenging. And it also makes collaboration get a bad name. So introducing Trello into a situation like this should mediate some of these issues. It could, for example, take away the need for, one, any formal time that's devoted to face-to-face -to -face meetings. Or many complaints have happened from people working on projects that there are just too many face-to-face -face meetings, and they're always interrupting the flow of that work progress. The Trello board then, or the Kanban system, can also help to develop trust with new collaborators as people need to come and go on the project. Um, it's also a way for the team to develop pride and ownership in the project deliverables. Five, it would be a way to critique or revolutionize a deliverable to higher standards because people can see its process, they can see the iterations, and you can be very specific about what changes need to be made in order to raise them to higher standards. Six, Trello is a way to keep track of many moving pieces in one project. And seven, it simplifies language expectations and promotes visual understanding. So that 
can help cross all sorts of cultural barriers that might be implicit in one workplace or implicit within a culture or a lingual situation. So I want to review some of the Kanban principles within the digital workflow that Trello creates. So Kanban principle one is to be able to visualize that workflow. These images that I'm using are from um, a web guide called The Four P Kanban Principles, a visual guide by Simon Buring from 2021. And basically, the Kanban system is you have a to-do section, up and in process section, and then you have done. And as you can see in this image, analysis, development, testing, that can get as complicated as you want to. So, base, But once you label those columns, they represent either the type of work or who's responsible for the work. Talk about cards being stories. And so um, it's to bring in that empathy piece of design thinking where you're thinking about the end user and how your product or deliverable or work will help to improve the quality for that user story. Um, I'm not sure that I feel like I'm advanced enough to try to frame things in stories, but that says the original Kanban principle. We will move Kanban cards then from left to right as we read so that work gets completed in this sort of timeline and and everybody who's on the project team has the ability to both create more create these little cards and also move them around so once we've visualized this work we can use color again to represent a theme um, and we can place the cards into columns depending on their workflow status okay so how does that look in Trello so here so here in Trello, each individual user of Trello gets a workspace. Each individual then can be invited to multiple boards. The example that I've done a screenshot of for you here is uh, the teacher's workspace who is managing a class called uh, TGI, which is software development. And he has multiple teams with multiple boards so that he can see them working at once. So one of the student teams is called Bloodshot Forest, and one of the student teams is called Rapture. In between, the teacher has dropped in a resource called Game Development Template. So you can consider the board could have individual resources on it, or if you invite project members to a separate board, you could create the resources in one space. It's interesting, but there's room for flexibility. Kanban process, principle number two, then, is to limit how much work is always in progress and get it done. Move it to the done area. And these little speech bubbles are, are common things that happen in collaboration. Things like, I have too much work, or I don't have any work, or how can I help you? And these are called blockages in Kanban. So Trello helps us move through those blockages. Here's another example. So same class, this is from the software development class where they're really in the middle of, of Trello. And I think there are 14 students who are working on this one board at once. But you can see that they divided up their boards um, by the, the entire team gets access to this board. And now they've made columns based on either the um, software being used, Blender or Unity, or the type of process that will help their development of a software game, which are maybe music and sound effects, story, the art. And then they also have an in progress and they also have a completion piece. So each student can choose, I wanna work on this and so I'm going to move it from one of the original five columns over to the in progress thing. You can see that there are little circles. These are for each student. And then finally on the right, this is when it's completed. In a lot of cases, these things come out as images, but there's that student work that you're seeing there and it's done and they're proud of it. This is my, our, the, my Trello board that I created for our GCID team for our uh, project that's coming up. And we decided to do it in a different way, but you can see we're using color again to talk about different aspects of project management as we develop this project together. Each ticket then, each side, each one of those little things can also have a checklist so we can build lots more things into it. So for the software development um, example on the left, they're looking at general sound effects. We need, we need walking sounds. Um, and on our right side here, this was for one of our team meeting cards and we needed to bring our ideas uh, for 
initiate in terms of the process. We need to commit to an ISD model. Oh, we didn't get that checked off yet. We need to brainstorm stakeholders. Oh, good. The people who worked on stakeholders did a great job. Let's check that off. And so one card can't get checked off until each one of these things is completed. However, we could make another board if we wanted to move some of those things to the done pile to show what we've actually done. Kanban principle three, then this focuses back on this continuous flow piece. And this is the real power of something like Kanban used inside the digital tool of Trello. If we look out for those blockages that interrupt workflow, then we can improve our team's performance when we can anticipate when those hard times or when that those blockages are going to to happen. Um, I'll show you more about how you can upgrade Trello to show how it would meet it would measure some of this flow measurement, but I'll show you in real time as well. So this is again from the software engineering piece. And if we change from our board view to the timeline view, and this is an upgrade option, you can see how the items sort themselves out. I'm looking at the week set here. And I can see that in progress on the in progress board, there was activity in each of these areas. There was also completion activities. I can't show you the entire screen, but you can see that there are things that have not yet been completed that will need to be completed. Which brings us to Kanban principle number four. The idea is that we're going to continuously improve and, and, and continuously um, monitor our own progress and our process of work. And that way it's agile enough to be able to be responsive to um, changes in the context of the workplace, changes to the project itself, or changes to the timeline. So that agility is something that makes a tool like Trello very appealing to people who are in, let's say, agile word, worlds of project management like software development. Individually on your Trello profile, you can see your activity. So I think the very basic um, sort of benefit that you get from Trello is when you can see, oh, this is what I've done. Now on this screenshot that I took today, it says I was, you know, shows really active that I was on May 26th. And so I could harness that as I did with a screenshot. But if I load more activity, I can see everything that I've done within the project. So why Trello? Why over all of the other systems of Kanban would I choose this resource? As a generalist, as someone who can work in many, many different situations and subject areas, I like the flexibility that Trello gives because it's an environment that I find very easy to use. I can see that Trello would actually change the culture of any workplace. And I can think of a number of projects that I've worked on where something like Trello and the visualization of workflow would have really helped us meet our deadlines more clearly. I can also see using the Trello templates. Again, I used one that was called project management to get me started with our, our uh, board when I first created it. So I can see doing that again for other circumstances. And why is Trello ideal for this course? Well, because it's about managing people and managing stuff and managing scope and managing timelines, all the really hard stuff that project management asks you to do. But Trello can be with you on your computer or in your pocket. Anytime you log in on the internet to Trello, it's updated, it's live, and you can see it. So it can be with you on the go wherever you are in the world, remotely working. I can see it being a very, very valuable resource. One of the questions also was, what questions come to mind as you engage with the resource? And I do have more questions. I was wondering how many people can be on a board at once? How can Trello handle one person on multiple projects? And I learned that through um, that profile piece that I can join multiple boards. So if there was a board for every project, you can even share cards across projects or link to other teams. So I can see it being very useful um, with the upgrades. Um, what apps are businesses already using and can they be integrated? My preliminary research showed that most businesses are adapting apps like this. Um, and the range of use is somewhere in the neighborhood of 30%. Um, but they're already using either something like Trello for workflow or they're using something like Slack for communication. And so that's pretty interesting. But finally, the resistance question is that a lot of people 
wonder about the time invested in learning something like Trello and if it would pay off and how quickly it would pay off. Would those little bumpy areas be enough to keep you away from something like Trello? Everybody's probably got a system, but is this a system that most that can be collaborative? Uh, I think that's the that's a big barrier that people coming to Trello or an app like it for the first time might experience. Trello is not a very few things, and I wanted to make sure that I was clear about those. Um, the communication inside Trello is brief at best. These cards are small. The font is, you know, limiting. Um, and so it's not really a discussion tool. It's more like a checklist. It's more like a, hey, I see you there, or can someone help me with this? It's very brief. Um, if you want a discussion tool, you can integrate Slack, which is the other number one app that most businesses are using now. Data isn't also tracked by Trello, specifically not at the free version. The more you upgrade, the more you can integrate. So this Trello wouldn't take the place of something that was a word processor or a spreadsheet, but it can integrate with things that we're already using, things like Google Apps or Microsoft Teams. Trello is also missing sort of this cost benefit analysis. And I just don't have the scope within this project in order to do that. But I can tell you that there are business level upgrades that I think are appealing. So for example, the timeline that I showed you previously is actually an upgrade because Trello is being used for an educational purpose. So if it was adapted across a collaboration, I would definitely upgrade to use the timeline. It looks like a Gantt chart and it would help you prioritize and also see how flow is happening. Um, there's more integration with calendars and so, so if you are already married to something like Google Calendar like I am, it would help you do that. If you had remote locations of people who were working and those locations were constantly changing, I would also think that integrating a map would be really useful. So for example, um, you, we used to have work for a company called Ontario Store Fixtures and they would be in charge of, let's say for example, putting a brand new marketing shelf into every Victoria's Secret across North America. So they create the shelf, but then to deliver it there, to have it installed, to have the training go to the people who are going to be, um, you know, actually using the shelf for display. I can see how all of those different pieces, a map would be very, very useful. Um, Something that we already ran into with our free space was a be able to assign admin roles to different team members. So we have seven members on our team, and I think we only get four licenses. So again, upgrading, there are the costs for you that might help. Um, wanted to also mention something called Zapier. Zapier is an, a, sort of a logarithm algorithm, algorithm that uses um, something like Trello in combination with something else like social media or like this. So for example, if every time I put down a picture on Trello, um, as the software engineering students are doing, it could automatically tweet that photo and then your social media branding is also being used. Um, every time we put down a date on Trello, it could integrate with Google Calendar so that everybody had the same Google Calendar benefits. That can be both individual or it can be system-wide integration. In a the nutshell then, I think that Trello is best for helping students in this class be prepared, be ready for communication scenarios. And this is the question. Um, I think that you will find most situations where an instructional designer or project manager is now used, you would be either merging into their larger communication system let's say, for example, if I'm moving from a Google Apps world into a Microsoft world, or if there wasn't something like that, and again, I'm thinking of all sorts of scenarios where they don't have the funding for a cross-corporation communication system, maybe Trello would be the starting point um, that you could use to organize your church bake sale or that library archiving, you know, project that you want to do in your community. Um, the other thing that, that, using Trello is it would help you anticipate the different functions that apps can bring to productivity and you'd be able to evaluate their use for your project individually. So 
after using Trello, you can, it would help you decide later when you met different teams, you know what we need here is we need a workflow app. Um, or maybe it would help you say, we don't need to spend time on a workflow app, but knowing it is there and having experience with it, I think would be beneficial for everybody in this class. Um, it helps in terms of accountability for yourself. It helps in terms of accountability for your employer, especially in things like re remote work when you have to, when your work is so invisible that it might be hard to convince somebody that you're on, on track, that you're on progress. Um, and I think it would also highlight over time where your own personal strengths and weaknesses are so that you would be able to develop a team that has the strengths and weaknesses to, to have a full team or for your future professional development if you wanted to focus on one of those areas. So that's all for now. I hope I've convinced you to have another look at Trello.